Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Even though the nebulas have already been announced, I wanted to finish the series. Today I am going to be ranking my novella choices, and then I'll tell you at the end what won. And then once I finish the novels, I will do the same for that. Starting with my least favorite, that is Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Baudard. I actually have a review for this from when it came out, and this was my biggest disappointment last year. While the writing was beautiful, I felt like the story started way too late. It, it seemed like it was an ending to a novel and I wanted the rest of the novel. I wanted to go on the emotional journey to get me there. And instead we're dropped in at the very end and I didn't have time to care about the main character or the messy relationships that she had. That's why it is my least favorite. The next is Flowers for the Sea by Zen E. Rocklin. I don't remember if I have a review for this. This I read pretty recently or within a couple months at least. This is a story that I think would have worked better for me if I was younger. It carries a lot of anger, especially with being how one is treated and treated for perceived differences. At my age and with the experiences that I have had in my life, it didn't work for me. But like I said, when I was younger, it would have. I still suggest everyone should go read it, at least try it, <laughs> because it is interesting. It had some, it's it set like on a future world. It's near the beginning of a dystopia because everything has fallen apart and the society hasn't yet figured out a way to cope with it. It's definitely different. So the next one is The Necessity of Stars by E. Catherine Tobler. And this is a first contact story, seemingly. It's written in an experimental style as well. The main character is a diplomat with the UN, but she's having memory problems. I'm not sure if it's the beginning of dementia or the beginning of Alzheimer's, but she's missing words, confusing places and things, which makes her more of an unreliable narrator since she isn't sure what she's seeing or what she's doing. And I wasn't exactly sure what the message of this novella was. It, it wasn't hard to read. Uh, it has beautiful descriptions. Definitely felt like I was in Iris Lands. When she interacts with people, you feel like you're there. But again, the, the message of the story was lost. And I'm not usually someone who means an overt message, but in this case, with this style of writing, I was just, it didn't resonate with me. And number four for me was, And What Can We Offer You Tonight by Premi Muhammad. This is set in a future world in which if you don't have a job, you, after a certain age, the government can cull you from society. And we follow a main character who is a courtesan in a house of courtesans. And it starts off at a funeral. Another courtesan has been murdered and they are at her funeral and then she wakes up and decides that she is going to go and take revenge on the person who killed her and society at large. And now our main character doesn't really want to disturb the status quo. She doesn't agree with how society is, but at the same time she still wants to be safe. And you spend a lot of time in her own head. This isn't a story where you are with the action. This is a story where action happens and then the main character is thinking about it and the repercussions of it. Number three is Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by Amy Ogden. And then this is a Little Mermaid telling. In this instance, the Little Mermaid did join the people on the top world. And it's set in a scientific future where humans have been genetically modified to live on various planets. The main character, Atule, is a daughter of the sea, was born to live and survive in the sea, and then fell in love with a man from the Vo tribe. 
and live on the land. And the process of being able to go live with him started wars and broke up a friendship. But now the people on the land are dying, a plague has happened. Etuli is not affected by it because her genetic makeup is different than the people on the land. So she goes back to the witch to get help with defeating this plague and also has to resolve the past with the witch and her past overall and decide where her future lies. And then coming in number two is The Giants of the Violet Sea by Eugenia Triantafolu. I know I butchered that. And this is a novella that was actually published in Uncanny Magazine, so I will link that down below. And this is another sci-fi setting where people have adapted to the world where they live. And the Giants of the Violet Sea are called Vinny Dolphins, this world that they live on, everything's very poisonous, and the main character, Th Themis, has been called from where she's living in a city because her brother has died, and all they know is that her brother died from poison, and through her process of grieving and coming to terms with her brother and the past that she walked away from, she finds out why her brother died, and this one is very atmospheric. I really, really enjoyed it. And then my favorite is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I think this novella just came out right when I needed it. And starting off with the line of, I wonder what crickets sound like. And I'm very used to hearing the crickets. I can't imagine a world where you don't have the crickets. And in this one, we follow a monk who decides that they want to change their calling and they become a tea monk. And a tea monk is someone who travels from place to place offering people tea, and not just tea, but it's an opportunity for people to talk. It's kind of like therapy. And so they get to talk about their problems and the tea monk tries to match a tea for them to drink to help them feel better. While this tea monk is on their journey, they meet a robot. And at this time, robots live in the wild. They have since their sentience was confirmed, and human society tries to leave them alone and not go invade their space. But now a robot has come, and their question is, what do humans want? And so that is the big question of the story, especially if humans don't always want the same thing. So like I said, this just came right at the time that I needed it and has remained my favorite. But, as I said, the Nebulas have been announced, and the winner of the Nebulas are... Drumroll. And What Can We Offer You Tonight by Premium Muhammad. Have you read any of these novellas? And if so, let me know what you thought down below. Thanks, and have a great day!